good morning children today we will discuss about single side band modulation single side band modulation or we can say ssb single side band modulation now let us discuss the ssb principle if you consider the uh, amplitude modulation the carrier contains no information so actually uh, if you see the message signal or base bed signal it uh, uh, and the information contains the um, base bed base band signal which has a low frequency but this carrier signal, which have high frequency, it helps to pass the information one, from one place to an, another place. Uh, so here the carrier signal does not contain any information, but only sidebands contain the information. So in case of double uh, sideband suppressed carrier, in the case of double sideband suppressed carrier, two sidebands, that means we have upper sideband and lower sideband. These two sidebands are identical with each other. So we are transmitting the same information twice. That means whenever we are using double sideband suppressive carrier, we have upper sideband and lower sideband, which are both are exactly identical to each other so that we are transmitting the information, the same information twice. So hence, we can transmit only one sideband. Either it may be upper sideband or it may be lower sideband without any loss of information. So it is possible to suppress the carrier and one sideband completely. That means when we use uh, a single sideband, that means if we transmit either upper sideband or lower sideband, that means when we transmit a single sideband, it is called single sideband modulation. Single sideband modulation. Also, we can say SSB, SC, single sideband suppressor carrier. In this process, bandwidth is decreases. So this is the spectra, SSB spectra, and this is baseband, which have low frequency. The uh, message signal, uh, original signal, this is M of omega. So this is zero, positive, it is two pi b, negative, it is minus two pi b. This is omega, uh, it is uh, uh, traveling to this side. And here, double sideband, already I told you, uh, in the case of double sideband, we have uh, lower sideband and upper sideband. That means we are sending the information twice, which are identical to each other. So here this is positive omega C. This is upper sideband and this side it is left side. It is lower sideband. And here uh, negative side, it is lower sideband and this is upper sideband. And here this is the uh, spectra of uh, uh, USB upper sideband. That means here we are leaving these lower sideband. Just we are showing, we are representing the spectra with upper side bands only, positive side, and this is upper side band, negative side. And this is the lower side band. We are leaving USBs, and we are uh, here we have only lower side band. So here this is the SSB spectra. Now let us see the balanced modulator or two stage uh, single side band modulator. So here, uh, if you compare the carrier frequency, with the measured frequency, carrier frequency with measured frequency. When we compare carrier frequency with me measured frequency, that is when carrier frequency is very high when compared with the measured frequency, what will happen? The single sideband modulated wave occupies the frequency band, which is much higher than that of the message signal. When this uh, single sideband uh, modulated wave occupies uh, the higher uh, the frequency band, which is higher than that of the message signal, it is impossible to design the band pass filter or uh, to suppress the um, desired sideband or to attenuate the unwanted sideband. So it should not be, uh, when we compare with the measured frequency, carrier frequency should not be very high. So uh, if it is very high, it is difficult to design the band pass filter uh, and uh, to uh, to pass the desired sideband and to attenuate the unwanted sideband. So hence, we have to use the two-stage SSB modulator, which uses the multiple modulation process. And here we are using uh, the two modulators. So here this is modulator two, this is the modulator one, and this is the message signal X of T, and this is the carrier signal AC cos omega CT. And here by uh, modulating these two, uh, carrier signal and message signal will obtain the uh, DSB-SC double sideband suppressor carrier 
and that output double sideband suppressed the carrier it is passing through this band pass filter one so here the output which is uh, coming uh, passing out through this band pass filter one uh, again it is modulating with another modulator with uh, carrier signal a to pass omega ct and here uh, these two signals the output bsbsc uh, modulating with carrier signal by using this modulator product modulator so that uh, the output bsbsc again it is passing through this band pass filter two so that uh, output we will obtain here single side band modulated wave so this is how we can suppress the unwanted uh, band uh, so that we can pass the uh, desired side band so here this is the process here we are using two modulators and two filters band pass filter so that finally we'll obtain the single side band modulated wave so here let the side band frequencies f1 plus fm1 to f1 plus fm2 assuming that usb is selected here we are assuming usb is selected so output of band pass filter 1 it is then used to modulate another carrier f2 which is higher than frequency of frequency 1 already we have discussed discussed in the diagram so at the output of the second product modulator we get another dsbsc signal so that the god band between highest lsb frequency and lowest usb frequency is increased so this will make the filter design easily so that the two stage uh, ssb modulator will simplify the filter design so generation of uh, single side band suppressed carrier so this is uh, uh, another method fil method filter method or frequency discrimination method so this is the me method which is used for the generation of single side band modulated wave only when the message signal should not have any low frequency content here we have a condition to generate the ssbsc here that the message signal should not have any low frequency content so if the message signal have low frequency content it is not possible to generate the ssbsc by using this filter method so here this is the block diagram this is the actual message signal so this is the carrier signal uh, so here uh, by modulating this message signal with this carrier signal uh, so here it modulates here so that we will obtain dsbsc signal double sideband suppressed carrier output we will obtain so this output uh, from this modulator uh, it is passing through this band pass filter so that we will obtain finally single side band modulated wave so this is how we can generate the ssb by using this filter method we are using here band pass filter so on this, this we have discussed in the diagram so uh, here the design point of this method it is this filter approach the dsps signal at the output of the product modulator which contains both the side bands the frequency difference if you observe the frequency difference between highest frequency in lsb lowest frequency in usb it is too small so the sharp cut off frequency is not possible practically by using this method so it allows usb through the filter that is uh, more than greater than 3 megahertz so which is main disadvantage of this filter so this is the next method uh, so here uh, we know that modulating signal it is cos omega m into t and carrier signal c of t equals to cos omega c into t so uh, on applying uh, dsbsc we'll obtain m of t into ct which is equal that means uh, here message signal this is carrier, carrier signal so by substituting these two we'll obtain uh, dsbsc we'll obtain cos omega m t into cos omega c into t so this is the time domain representation. So this is uh, uh, the LSB, uh, DSBSC, double sideband suppressed carrier. So here this is lower sideband, this is upper sideband. And here this is uh, negative side, it is uh, lower upper sideband and this is lower sideband. Omega C minus Omega M lower sideband. This is uh, DSB, Omega C plus Omega M. So here we have minus omega c plus omega m for lsb minus omega c minus omega m for usb so to transmit lsb so this is how we can represent the time domain so this is we are just we are play, uh, uh, here we are using here only lsb lsb and uh, here dsb is not representing here 
So to transmit USB, this is the time domain representation. Only we are choosing USBs only. This is USB representation. So this is how we can transmit USB. This is the LSB, and this is how we can transmit this uh, uh, double sideband suppressor carrier. This is the time domain representation. So hence for USB, it may write as cos omega c plus omega m into t equals to cos omega c t into cos omega m t minus sin omega c t into sin omega m into t. Hence for LSB, it may written as cos omega c minus omega m t equals to. Here we have for uh, uh, USB, here we have taken negative sign. And here for LSB, here we are choosing just positive sign. So this is equation number three. So for the trigonometric properties, we have cos omega c t minus pi by 2 equals to sin omega c t. Cos omega m t minus pi, pi by 2 equals to sin omega m into t. This is equation number 2. So by shifting the modulated signal by 90 degrees, sine terms are obtained. That is due to shifting, cosine terms are delayed. So here, whenever we are shifting uh, the modulating signal by 90 degrees, sine terms are obtained um, because of this. The, uh, the same shifting cosine terms are delayed. So substituting equation number two. So here in equation number one, we will obtain this one. Cos omega c t into cos omega m t plus or minus cos omega c t minus pi by two into cos omega m t minus pi by two. So from the Herbert uh, uh, transformation, we have x of t. Uh, if and only if x n of t equals to 1 by pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau by t minus tau into d tau. So this is from Herbert transformation. That is either LSB or USB is generated by 90 degrees phase shift. So let, uh, let us consider the modulating signal B x of t. Herbert transformation is x n of t. So carrier signal is c of t. And Herbert uh, transformation cn of t that is xn of t into c of t equals to xn of t into cn of t from equation number three it contains two terms if we add these two terms that means here let us see already uh, in equation number three if we add those two terms we will obtain the lower side band if we subtract the resultant term we will obtain usb terms so this is equation t three. That means we have plus or minus. If we add, we will obtain one side band. If we add another one, if we subtract these uh, two terms, we will obtain the another the another band. That means subtract, we will obtain the upper side band. If we add, we will obtain the lower side band. Now let us see another uh, method, phase shift method. So this method also used for the separation of lower side band. We are suppressing the lower side band by using this method. So this system uh, here we are using two balanced modulators which are M1 and M2 and two 90 degree space shifting networks. That means here we have modulator this one M1 and this is another modulator M2 and we are using 90 degree space shifter. We are using 90 degree space shifter, two 90, sh 90 degree space shifters we are using here. So this is the message signal. When we are passing this message signal through this modulator with the carrier signal, so we will obtain the output x of t cos omega c into t. And we are uh, using this 90 degrees phase shifter to this modulator m2 uh, with uh, we, when we are using 90 degrees phase shifter uh, to this m2. Uh, we will obtain the output had by transformation x n of t into ac sin omega t. So uh, the output which are coming from this uh, modulator M1 and modulator M2, when we are uh, sending these outputs to this adder, uh, so that we will obtain the suppressed uh, single sideband suppressor carrier. So separation of LSB is possible by using this phase shift method. We are using here 90 degrees phase shifting. So already we have discussed this one and uh, the output of the carrier oscillator is applied to the M1 and by 90 degrees phase shifter to M2. Output of M1 is X of T AC cos omega T. So we are re replacing this omega C with uh, 2 pi FC. So X of T AC cos 2 pi FC into T. Output of M2 X N of T AC sin omega C T. So we are replacing again here with 2 pi FC. Omega C we are replacing with 2 pi FC. So X N of T AC sin 2 pi FC into T. 
So outputs of M1 and M2 applied to the adder. Output of adder is X of T AC cos 2 pi FC T plus Xn of T AC sin 2 pi FC into T. So if we take AC as common, we'll obtain this one X of T AC into X of T cos 2 pi FC T plus Xn of T sin 2 pi FC into T. So this is the expression which represents the single sideband signal with only USB. That is, it rejects the lower sideband. So the advantages of SSB here, the main advantage of SSB, it is narrow bandwidth we'll, uh, it's na um, because of its narrow bandwidth. So it has higher power efficiency. It is easy to switch from one sideband to the another and it can also uh, it can use low audio frequencies as modulating signal. So the disadvantages are SSB transmitter uh, and receiver need to have an excellent frequency stability. So design of 90 degrees phase shifter for X of T is extremely critical. Applications are this uh, single sideband modulation it is used in many voice applications. So it is used for high frequency communications, widely used in short wave, wave portion of the radio spectrum for the two-way radio communication. Thank you, children.